Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be building a node login app. Um, it's basically a node app which is connected to a PostgreSQL database. Um, the database is used to store user details such as their names, email addresses and passwords. Um, users can log on to our app and if they're authenticated they'll be redirected to the dashboard. They can also register um, and then anything in this form will be um, added to the database. Um, it goes through many validation checks as well. Um, just to show you the database tables, we have set up in Postgres. You can see the application only currently has four users. So and you can see it stores the name, email, and the hash password you can see here. So it's nice and secure. We use bcrypt to hash these passwords. Um, just to show you the app, so if we register a new user, we just say for now Charlie. And then we'll say uh, charlie at hotmail.com and then password. Okay, oh, the passwords don't match, so that's an example of the form validation. If we go again. Okay, you can see we're now registered, please log in. And then if we check our table, just to make sure he's been added, you can see we have our new user, Charlie, added there. So if we try to log on, and you can see we get redirected to the dashboard where it says hello and the user. Um, again, if we're authenticated and we try to go to the login route, we get redirected to the dashboard. Same with the register route. We get taken straight back to the dashboard as we're already authenticated and vice versa. If we try to go into the dashboard when we're not authenticated anymore, we've logged out. You can see we get redirected to the login page. Okay, so it's a nice little project. Um, I think it's a good skill to know how to know, interact with PostgreSQL databases and um, hash passwords and just uh, create authentication uh, imp implement authentication for your app. So I hope you enjoy and let's get going. Okay, so to start this project, the first thing we need to do is download PostgreSQL. Okay, so if you go to the website postgresql.org, follow the download instructions relevant to your system. Um, I'm not going to walk through that process, it should be pretty self explanatory, really. Um, but yeah, if you just install that, once that is installed, then we'll open up our terminal. And to log into PostgreSQL from our terminal, we just simply type PSQL and then dash capital U for user. And we're, the initial default user set up for us is called Postgres. So if we log on to Postgres, and then we'll do a dash D for database. And we have a default database called Postgres uh, set up as well when we install PostgreSQL. Just say Postgres again. So just enter the password. You um, created when you set up PostgreSQL and then once you're logged in you should see Postgres equals and a hash sign here. Okay so if you want to display all the users within our current PostgreSQL setup just type in backslash du for display users. You can see here we have two users in our database our PostgreSQL setup. We have a uh, one which I've previously created called Connor and I, uh, he, the attributes here you can create a database and we also have this user here Postgres which is the user we're logged in as now and you can see the attributes is that this user's got super user access can create roles users databases everything really so the first thing you're going to need to do when you've installed Postgres and logged in to this is say we're going to create a new user okay so just say to do that say create user then add your username. So for this example, I'm going to say con Bailey. And then we say with password. Actually, give us a really simple password of password for now. Make sure it's in single quotes. <clears throat> and then we're just going to give this user um, access to create a database. So just say create DB. Okay. And end that with a semicolon and press enter. And you'll see here. It's created a role. Okay, so if we do a backslash du again, we can see the Con Bailey user has been added with access rights to create databases. Okay, so now we're going to come out of this backslash q for quit and we're going to log in as our new user. Let's 
clear the terminal. So if we do PSQL uh, dash capital U for user again, we'll say con Bailey, um, and then we'll say dash D, and we're going to reconnect to that Postgres database. Okay, so dash D Postgres and press enter. Enter the password, which was just password for me. You can see now we're uh, connected to the Postgres database again as Con Bailey, the new user we've just created. Um, now the first thing we want to do once we've logged in is create an actual new database. Okay, so we're going to say create uh, capitals. It doesn't have to be capitals, but it's just to highlight the uh, PSQL syntax. So we're going to say create database. We're going to call this database for this project node login. Okay, again in with a semicolon. You can see there we get our create database. Now, in order to list all the databases stored within your PostgreSQL setup, just type a backslash L for list, and then you can see we get our list of databases. So the one we just created here is node login, because the owner is Con Bailey. Okay. Um, now we want to connect to this database. So to connect, we just say backslash C, and then we're going to say node login. And you'll get a message there saying you are now connected to the database node login as user Con Bailey. So that's great. Okay, now in, we want to create our users table now. So this is going to be a table where we're going to log all of our um, app users' name, emails, passwords, that kind of thing. So they can log on and authenticate to our uh, system we're going to build. Okay, so to create a table, we'll just say create table. And we're going to call this table users. And then the first column, so if you do an open bracket, we're going to say the first column is ID. And this ID is going to be a type of big serial. Now, a big serial is a type in PostgreSQL, it's just basically a number, an auto incrementing number. So any new entries we add, the first entry will be have an ID of one and it will go up. Um, got one number each time a new entry is added. Okay, so Postgres manages that for us. We don't have to worry about completing the ID column. Um, this is going to have an attribute of primary key as well. So this is just a unique value in the table. Um, all the IDs will be unique to the relevant user. And then we just want to make this not null as well. So this cannot be null. It can't be left blank when we enter this into, the, into our database. Okay, so the next column, we're going to say name, and this is going to have a type of var char, 200, var char just basically means any characters, um, and the 200 is just the length we can allow, so 200 should be enough for most names anyway. And we're going to say not null, comma, then the next column we want is the email address for the user. Um, so we'll say email, I'll make this var char, We'll say 200 again should be enough. Not null. Um, and then finally, we want to store the user's password. Okay, so that will be password. Um, and then we'll just say that'll be var chart again. We'll say 200 again. And we'll just say not null. Okay, so none of these columns can be left blank. Uh, the last thing we want to do on this is just enter a constraint. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to say unique and then uh, open bracket email. Okay, so this means basically there can only be one, uh, all emails have to be unique within our database. So we can't have two of the same email registered for a user. Okay, and we'll close the, uh, we'll close the column inputs off with a a bracket and then that should be it if we do a, a semicolon and you can see we've got our create table okay so now if we do a select all from users obviously this isn't going to have any records at the moment but you can see we get our table there with our id column name column email column and password column okay um if you just want to see the constraints on a table if you do a backslash d say users you can see we have our constraints listed here so just all details for the table really so you can see it gives us the column names gives us the type they were, um, which should be entered the type of data they should contain 
and then we have our constraints down the bottom here. As you can see, we've got a primary key um, constraint on the ID column here, and we also added that unique constraint for the email column, so we can't have two of the same email in our database. Okay, so that's basically it for our PostgreSQL setup. Next, we're going to set up our Express server. Okay guys, so next we're going to set up our node application with Express. Um, you can see here I'm in VS Code um, and I've created a new folder which is stored on my desktop called Node Login. Um, there's no files in there at the moment. The first thing we need to do is I've just opened up a terminal within VS Code. You can do that by pressing Terminal, New Terminal. Come to the terminal and we're going to initialize our npm. So we're just going to say npm init dash y. Okay, and the dash wire just basically gives us all the default values when we set up our or initialize our node app. Okay, so you can see now we've got this package.json file. Um, first thing we want to do in this file is just adjust the scripts. Okay, so um, I'm going to change this test. We're going to say start. And when we do, so if we, if we um, type npm run start in the terminal, it will trigger this script to run. Okay, so when we trigger start, we want it to basically run this script and we're just going to say node server.js. We're going to create this server.js app in a second, um, but we also want to just create a dev script as well. Okay, so if we do a double quote dev, and this is going to use a package called, or a library called node mon, which we're going to install in a second as well, that's server.js. I'll explain what node money is in in a sec, but for now let's just um, install the dependencies. So we'll say uh, npm i for install, and we'll just say for now express. Okay, and then after this we're going to install node mon as a dev dependency. And I'm sure for those of you that have never used node mon, it's basically just a library we can use, and it refreshes the server. Or the application for us whenever we make any changes to any files and it just saves us from coming into the terminal shutting down our server and rebooting it manually so it just saves us a lot of time so it's a very good uh, library to use so we're going to say npm i dash capital d node mon let that install okay so Let's just close this down. What's going on here? Okay. You can see we've got our dependencies now. So express and node mon. Oh, I didn't save my scripts. Sorry guys, two secs. Start, let's just say node server.js dev node mon server.js okay so that's it for now so let's start um, to start let's create this server.js file we're referencing here okay so I'm going to come into our directory and we'll just type server create a new file server.js okay now the first thing we want to do here is bring in express so we'll say const express equals require express Okay, so that just brings in the Express library so we can use it. Next, we're going to say const app equals Express. And it's just basically, now whenever we type app, we have access to all the Express library features, functions, that kind of thing. Um, I'm then going to state a port number. So we're going to say um, const port, then capital letters, equals process.env.port. Or we'll say 4000. Okay, so this process.env is just refer uh, referencing an environment variable. This is going to be uh, the port used in a production when the apps when the app we make is shifted to production mode. Otherwise, it's going to use port 4000 in development mode, which is for this case. Okay, and then we're going to say underneath here, we'll say we'll just start off with a get request. So we'll say app.get. Um, and when we go to the root directory, so we'll place that here, the root directory of our app, 
uh, that's the first parameter, and then the second is a function that takes in the request and the response. And then here we're just going to do a res.send and we'll just give us a little message of hello just to show, just to get everything working. Okay, and then at the bottom we want to say app.listen and then we give it a port to listen on as the first argument. And then we can say just a, a call back in here just to say console.log and we'll do In equals console.log server running on port, and we'll just say that um, dollar. So, this is a template literal. I've used back ticks here, and we just put the port number in there. Okay, so now that should be log as well. So, now let's start this file this server up. So, remember, we can type in nodemon. And we want it to run server. Oh no, sorry, not no. We want to do npm run dev. Okay, and that is just going to run this script here, this nodemon server.js. So if you run that, you can see we get our nodemon booted up and it says server running on port 4000. So now if we visit port 4000, say localhost 4000 and we get uh, our message of hello rendered to the screen. Okay, Okay. next thing I want to do with this project is create our views we're going to be using within the app. Okay, so I'm going to, actually first thing I'm going to do is install a new uh, library. So if we come to another terminal, I'm just going to say npm install ejs. Now what EJS is, it's, uh, it's going to be our template view engine for this project, okay? So it allows us to basically render um, EJS files, which can be um, coded as HTML, and it allows us to pass uh, variables through to these files so we can use them in our front end, like the usernames, that kind of thing, okay? So once the EJS is installed, we're going to create a new folder, and it's going to be called Views. All the EJS files have to be stored in this folder called Views for our project to access them. Um, and the first view we want to add is just the home view. So we'll say index.ejs. Okay, and I'll just do a HTML boilerplate for now. We'll just say h1 of home. Uh, let's add another uh, file. We'll say um, login dot ejs this is where our users will log in the h1 of login there as well uh, we also want the users to be able to register so we'll say register dot ejs okay h1 of register and then uh, we also want a user dashboard, so this is where the user will be redirected to once they've logged into the app. So we'll say dashboard.ejs, and then if, uh, let's just do hello, we'll actually do a h1, we'll say hello, and then show you how ejs works, we're going to just do some uh, ejs syntax here. So in order to insert a variable into an ejs file, we'll just do um, a less than sign percent sign equals and then we're going to pass in a user variable to this um, this page okay and then we'll close that off with another percent sign and a greater than sign, uh, symbol okay so if we go back to our server.js file now we're going to create our routes to to render these pages okay so for this app.get we want this to render the um, the index.ejs file Okay, so let's do that. We'll just say res.render. In here, we'll just type index. And as we're using EJS, it will know to look in the views folder. So I'll show you, we need to add a bit of middleware in a second as well. Um, and then let's do an app.get 
uh, we'll do forward slash users forward slash uh, register. Okay, and that will take in a request and a response. And here we're just going to do a response dot render uh, the login EJS file. Um, let's copy this down. Do the same for login here as well. Oh, that should be register, sorry. And then we'll do finally the dashboard. Okay, and that should be dashboard. Okay, um, and then above all these, we just need to add some middleware here. So we're going to say app.set and we're going to say view engine. And then this is going to be EJS. So this will tell our app to use the EJS view engine uh, to be able to render these EJS files. Okay, and remember in our dashboard, we passed in this user variable. So just to show you what that does, if we come back to our dashboard, we can add. Uh, an object as a second parameter here. We can state that user variable, and for now, I'll just state the user as Connor. Okay, so now if we go back to our server, let's just check that's still running. Call 4000. You can see we get the EJS file rendered. If I go to, I think it was users slash dashboard. Ah, oh, should be res.render, sorry guys. These should all be res.render. Okay. And you can see we get hello and it takes that user variable and converts it to the actual uh, name there. Okay, so that's our routes um, completed for now. Okay, next we're going to add our forms to our login and register EJS files. I'll do the register file first. So, first thing we want to do here is we're going to say um, we're going to have a form underneath this, and this is going to post to our users forward slash register route. Okay, so we're going to create this route, this post route in our server soon, but we'll just do the form first. Um, after that, we just need to include the method of post, like so, and then come underneath this. Let's just do a div. So this contain our first input, and it's going to be a text input. This is where the user is going to insert their name uh, when they're registering. We'll just give this an ID of name, and we'll say a name of name. And also, we'll say placeholder of name, and we also want this to be a required field. Okay. And then, if we come underneath this, we'll do the same again. And this time, we want the user to insert their email, so we'll make this a type of email. Just change the IDs and name to be the same as that, so all email and placeholder of email as well. Okay. That's all I format that, okay. Um, next, if we copy that underneath, and this next input will be a password, ID of password. placeholder, a password, um, and we also want the users to confirm their passwords, so we'll just do the same thing here underneath, just give us an ID of password 2, a name of password 2, and a placeholder of confirm password. Okay. Okay, and finally underneath this, just want another div. Uh, 
then we'll have an input type of submit for submit button and this is going to have a value of register okay and then underneath this we just want an anchor tag to, to forward slash users forward slash login and here we'll just say already registered login here like so okay so let's just check that quickly if we go to slash register and you can see we get our form there um i want to make it look a bit better so let's just say let's just do the skeleton cdn just to give it a little bit of styling um because yeah that raw html just looks ugly so we'll do a link in the header i'm just going to link to the skeleton cdn so now if we refresh close that down see we get the skeleton cdn style in there okay so i'm going to copy this and then just paste it into our login and then with the login let's just change that back to login h1 make the title login as well and we just need to change the um, form action route here so this will be forward slash login like so um, and we want to remove this name input here because the users are going to log in with their email addresses for this app and we also can remove the uh, confirm password input as well okay and then this should be this submit button should have a value of login and then it should be linked to the register. I should say register. Okay, so let's quickly check that. Go back to our app. We press already registered. And you can see we get our login page there. So we can go back and forth between the two. Okay, we're then just going to quickly update our dashboard and index EJS files. So if you come to dashboard.ejs here, um, and we don't really need much here really. I'm just going to do a log out button. Okay, so we're just going to say, just do an anchor tag. It's going to be forward slash users, forward slash log out. And then I just put log out here. Like so. Um, I also want to include that skeleton CDN on here as well. So let's grab that from here. Okay, and then for the index page, I'm just going to have an anchor tag to say log on. That'll be forward slash users, forward slash login, say login. Again, we want that skeleton CD in there as well. So now, let's just check everything. Okay, cool. Yep, so we're all working. So next thing we're gonna do is connect our app to our PostgreSQL database. Okay, so to set up our database, let's go back to our VS Code and back to our terminal because we're gonna to need to install two more packages here. Okay, so first one we're going to install is npm.env. Um, and this is going to be used to store or create our environment variables we're going to use. And then we also want to install PG, which uh, is the Node Postgres library, which we use to connect our Node app to our uh, PostgreSQL database. Just install those now. Okay, cool. So now the first thing we need to do is create our environment variables to store our database uh, details, okay? So we're gonna to come to our directory here. I'm just going to say, create a new file. We're going to call it .env, like so. Okay, and then here we're going to store our PostgreSQL database credentials we made earlier. So the first one was our user. We're going to say db user, and that equals we gave our username of Con Bailey. This would be your username, um, and then we're going to say db password, 
and I gave this a simple this user a simple password of password. Um, what's that changed? Okay, and then the next variable we want is the DB host, and this is just going to be local host for now. Next one we want is a DB port, next variable, and that's going to equal 5432, which is a default port for PostgreSQL. And then finally, we want the DB database, and this is going to be the name of the database. And remember, we called this node login. That's what we called it. Um, yeah, node login up here, cool. Okay. So now we can save that, and then now that's done, we can use these variables um, in our database config file, which we're going to make now. So we'll create another new file in our directory. Let's just close all this down. We're going to call this file dbconfig.js. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in this dbconfig file is say we want to require our environment variables we've stored here. Okay, so we're going to say require dot env, and then at the end of this we're going to say dot config. Okay, so this will bring in all of our environment variables from this file here, and then underneath this we're going to say const pull the capital P. That's going to require the PG module we just installed, so the post Node Postgres library. Okay. Um, and then underneath this, we're going to say, we're going to create a Boolean variable called isProduction. And that's going to equal process.env.nodeenv or uh, equal, sorry, equals production. Okay, so this is going to look to see if our app's um, hosted in production. And if it is, if it is in production, this will be true. Otherwise, in development, this uh, will be set to false. Okay. And underneath this, we're going to say const connection string. And this is quite a long string. So bear with me on this one. <clears throat> and this is going to equal, so we're going to do back ticks here. And we're going to say postgresql. Colon two forward slashes, and then we're going to use our first environment variable here. So if we do a dollar sign and open the code braces, we're going to say process dot env dot db underscore user to correspond to that user variable we stored in our dot env file, and then we're going to do a um, another a colon and then another template literal here. We're going to say process dot env dot and this next one will be db password like so and then we want to do after this one uh, an at and then we're going to add to another template this row to do a dollar sign so we process dot env dot and this is going to be the db host db underscore host and then after that, another colon. Template this for process.env. And the next one is the db port. Okay, and then finally, we do a forward slash. Last template this for here, this will be process.env.db underscore database for the database name we stored. Okay, so that's that. That's it for our connection string. As I said, it's quite long. And then coming under this, uh, we just want to initialize a new pool variable. So say const pool equals new pool. So the uh, library we brought in up here. And then this is going to be an object. And the first um, a variable in this object is going to be the connection string. And we're basically going to say here if if the app's in production, so if that's true, uh, we're going to say process dot env dot database uh, URL. 
for the production database. Otherwise, we're going to use our connection string we stated above. Okay, and then underneath that, all we need to do is say const. Uh, no, we just need to export this now. So module dot exports equals pull. So that should be that's it for our database config file. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this DB config file into our server.js so we can use that pull method. So if you come up to the top, I'm going to say const and we're going to say here, what should we call it? Um, let's just say, yeah, bring in pull. Pull equals require um, dot forward slash db config. Okay, so that will bring that pull um, library in from this file here. We created a db config. Okay. Um, now we're just going to install another package. This is going to be called bcrypt. So what bcrypt does, um, it allows us to hash passwords. So basically it's bad practice. Whenever a user registers to an app, uh, their passwords should not be stored in the database in their raw text format in case the database gets compromised. So we're going to use bcrypt to hash our passwords. So I'll show you what that does uh, shortly. Just check that is installed. You can see yeah, we've got bcrypt there. That's great. Um, also, just for testing purposes, I'm going to go back to our PostgreSQL and I'm going to add um, a user to our table. So um, if we say insert, just for testing purposes, insert into users, um, and we want to insert the name, email, and password. <clears throat> and then underneath that, I'm going to say values. And I'm going to say, we'll just say Connor for now. Uh, give it an email of con bailey at gmail.com. give them a password of password again for now okay so that's been inserted if we do a select all from users you can see we've got our entry there cool okay so the next step is I'm going to uh, create our register post route now so if we go back to our server.js file um, and then underneath this middleware here I'm going to say app.use express.url encoded. This needs to take an option of extended false. Okay, and what this piece of middleware allows us to do is just um, send details from our front end. Um, so, for example, let's register. It asks to send name details, email details, and password details to our server from the front end. Okay, so that's what that piece of middleware does. And then, going to come to the bottom here, underneath our get request, we're now going to do an app dot post. So we'll, as I said, we'll do our register route first. This will be users slash register, and this takes in a request and a response. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is take the comma there. Is we need to get the name, get the variable from that form. Okay, so we're going to say let. We'll do an object here. We'll say name, email, password, and password to equal request dot body. Okay, <clears throat> and then if we but now we'll just say console.log. Just make sure that works. Okay, so if we come back to our app, you should see now. So if we go here, just type Connor.
Okay, so I'll press enter on that. We should have, yeah, you can see we get the, the, the variables or the input passed back to our server here as that's console logged in the server now, so that's working. Okay, so underneath this, we're going to say let errors equal an empty array. Okay, and this is what we're going to use for our form validation. So show what I mean. So if we get any errors when we're completing our form, uh, they'll be pushed to this errors array here. Okay, so we're going to work on that now. So underneath that, we'll say the first validation check we're going to do is we want to make sure all forms are entered. Okay, so there's no blank fields left on the form. So say if not name or not email or not password or not password not password two we want to do here an errors dot push and here we're going to say um, an object say message and the message will be please enter all fields Okay, <clears throat> the next validation check we want to do is we're going to look out for the password length. Okay, so we'll say if uh, the password dot length is less than six characters long. Again, we'll just do an errors dot push here, and we'll just say the password should be at least six characters okay uh, the next validation check we want to do here is we want to make sure that the passwords match okay so to confirm password is the same as the first password so we'll just say if password is not equal to password 2 and we'll just say again passwords do not match like so okay and then underneath that so basically if any of these validation checks um, resulted in an error we're going to say if it's going to push so if you're going to say if this errors array here um, has some items in we're going to need to return uh, the login page with an error so we're going to say if errors dot length is greater than zero and here we're going to say res dot render we want to re-render the register page and we want to pass in uh, the errors array okay like so um, so let's just See if that's working and uh, if we just come back to our errors, uh, sorry, our register EJS file, I'm going to come up here, do an unordered list. I'm going to say we're going to do um, the EJS JavaScript template symbols here. So we're going to do if statement and we're going to say if type <coughs> of I'm going to say errors is not equal to undefined um, and then we need to close each line here so do a percent greater than and then so it basically is just saying if um, if there's errors been passed through to the render to this uh, register EJS render, render we're going to say list and when it's a list the um, errors dot message, and we need to do the um, template engine output here. So greater less than sign percent equals. We'll close that off. Percent equals, and then we'll just close it off down here as well. Okay, so let's see if that works. So if now we go back to our app, I'll go to register, 
let's just try and do something wrong here. So I'll say, I'll put the wrong passwords in. Press register. So, why has that not worked? See, I put the wrong passwords in. Uh, bear with me a second, guys. Um, ah, see, I know what I've done wrong. I've not done a 4H because we got multiple errors. We need to do a 4H there, okay? So we'll come underneath this, we'll say percent, and we'll say errors dot four h because we had here, so we had a password which was less than six characters long, and also they didn't match, so there'd be two errors pushed to the errors array the errors array. So we'll have to do a four h here error, and that'll be a function. And then let's close that down in there and then we can place this in here take the s off that because we're just referring to this error here and then that should be now if we close that off okay let's give that a go again if I refresh that Okay. Hmm. There should be a bracket there. Okay, third time lucky. Sorry guys, bear with me a second. So yeah, I shouldn't have had the uh, bracket there. Okay, should work. Okay, and yeah, you can see we get our error messages there. Let's just try one more thing. We'll do a password of five letters. And yeah, you can see we password should be at least six characters. Okay, great. So that's all working. Our form validation is complete. Okay, so next, once the form validation is complete, we can move on to checking our database to see if the user already exists. Okay, so let's just go back to our, our register post uh, method here. So we're going to come underneath this. So if if there are form validation errors, we'll re-render the page. Else, and this means our form validation has passed. And then coming underneath this, we're going to now we're going to bring in bcrypt, okay? So we're going to say let hashed password equal, and we're going to say here um, it has to be a wait actually. So this this is a asynchronous uh, function here. So we're going to need to await that. So we're going to need to make this um, request uh, this function here asynchronous. So we just put async up here. Like so. So we can say let hash password equals await, and we're going to say bcrypt. Yeah, I've brought bcrypt in, so we can get in up here const bcrypt equals require bcrypt. OK, 
Okay. And this is going to be bcrypt dot hash. We're going to take in our password, which the user provided us with. And then we're going the, the second argument here is the amount of rounds of um encryption we want to ha hash our password with. 10 is the default value, and I find it's perfect for this type of project we're doing really. Uh, if you go larger, the um, algorithm gets more complex, but it takes longer to generate the hash password, so we'll leave it at 10 for now. Okay, let's just console log the hash password. So just to show you what the hashing does, if I just uh, come in here, let's do a password of password for now. can see here this is our password and this is what bcrypt hashes that password into so we can store that securely in our database okay so it's nice and safe and secure and it'd be very hard for a hacker to kind of encrypt that password it take a lot of time okay so kind of underneath this um, next we want to query our database to see if the users already exists before registering okay so to do that we're going to use the pool, which we bought in at the top here from our DB config, we're going to say dot query. And the first thing this does, it takes in an, an SQL statement. So here we're going to say um, select all from users, which is our table name, where uh, email equals dollar one. Okay, and this dollar one will be it will be replaced by the variable we pass in the list after okay so we're going to pass an email so this dollar one will be replaced with this email which is uh input in the form and pass that to the server up here okay and then once that's done we do a callback function so we'll say either there's going to be an error or it'll return some results from the database and then here we're going to say if there is an error that should be a function arrow function if error throw error or else what we're going to do here we'll say console dot log results dot rows and that will return a list of all a list containing objects of our user details if they're actually in our database. It's just to show you if you go back to our database now you can see we've got this user here of Connor his registered email is conbailey at gmail.com. So if we do that, go back to our register page. If we search for Connor, we say conbailey at gmail.com. It's this email here. I press enter there. And if we go back to our uh, That worked. Let's have a look. Oh no, we just got an empty list back. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. It's because it was Connor Bailey at gmail.com. That's why. Um, let's go again. Sorry about that, guys. It should just be Con Bailey. Right, try that again and you can see now we get our when we console log the results rows, we get a list containing the object of the user in our database with the ID of one name of Connor con Bailey so that's working that's great take that console log out okay so next underneath this we're going to say if results um, yeah dot rows dot length is greater than zero, uh, that means the user is already added to our database. We're going to say um, errors.push again. We're going to push a message, message um, user 
already or oh, email already registered. Okay, and then we want to do a res dot render. Want to email um, render the register page again forward slash, and we just want to pass in that errors object again. Our errors variable in an object. Okay, so let's try that out. You can see now we get the email already registered. Okay, great, so that's working. Okay, uh, before we move on to the next part of that post method, we're just going to install another couple of libraries here in our terminal. Uh, so if we go to our install terminal here, we're going to install npm i express session. Um, and also express flash. Okay, so this is just going to be used to store our user details in the user session and also to display flash messages when we get redirected to other pages of the website. Okay, so we need to put those in middleware up here. So first we need to bring them up, bring them in at the top as well, those libraries. So we're going to say uh, const session equals require uh, session uh, express session and we also want to bring in the flash as well so we'll say const flash equals require express flash like so and then we also need to put these in the middleware section as well Okay, so we're going to say, comes our middleware section underneath here, we'll say app.use, um, and we're going to say session. And what this does, if you do a bracket and then an object, um, and the first uh, variable this takes is a secret, and this can just be anything you want really. The longer it is, the more, and more random, the more secure it is. We're just going to say secret for now. Uh, you usually want to uh, place an environment variable, but we'll just leave it as is for now. And what this does, this is a key we want to keep secret, um, and it's just going to encrypt all of our information we store in the session. Uh, the next variable we want to include is resave, and this is going to be false. And what resave does is, uh, should we, it's saying, should we resave our session variables if nothing has changed, if none of our information has changed, which we don't want to do. That's why I say, well, that's why we're saying it's false. And then finally, once save initialized, that's also going to be false. What this basically does, this means, do we want to save session details if there's been um, no value placed in the session, which is obviously false. We don't want to do that. Okay. And then we also want to use app.use flash underneath this as well just to display our flash messages okay so now if we come back down to our register function we're nearly done here with this with this uh, step um, we just want to say so if results.rows so if there's a user already registered we'll redirect uh, we'll re-render the register page we'll say else um, so else that means uh, there is no user in the database and we can register the user. We're going to say pull.query. And this time we're going to insert into um, users uh, the name, email, and password. Remember, we don't need to worry about the ID as SQL sorts that out for us. And then we're going to do values. And the values we insert are, so we're going to do the dollar one, dollar two, and then dollar three. Okay, and then we can also say underneath here, returning ID and password. 
So this will just return for our reference the ID of the user and the password. Okay. And then after the SQL statement, we obviously need to replace these variables here with the ones in this list. So we're going to say name, email. Remember, we want to store the hashed password in this database. So we'll say hash password. We'll then do the function after. So if there's an error or results. Okay, that should be a function. Keep doing that. Um, next we're going to say so if error throw error otherwise we'll say console.log results dot rows just for our reference again and then here we're going to say uh, request we're going to use the flash library now is going to be used to uh, pass a flash message into our redirect page. So we're going to give this, we're going to say this is a success message. Um, and then the second parameter is the actual message content. So we'll just say uh, you are now registered. Please log in. And then we're going to do a, a res dot redirect, and we're going to redirect to the login uh, forward slash users forward slash login page. Now we just need to amend our um, our login page to display that flash message. Okay, so if we come here, I'm just going to say. If uh, messages dot um, we call this success message um, let's do, a, do that there and we're going to say I want to make this another older list actually we'll put this in a list format Uh, we're going to say li and then we'll output the message. We'll say da -da -da -da. messages dot success message like so and then close that off and then we also want to close this off here as well so we'll say okay so now, if we go back to register, if we register a new email, I'll just say Natasha for now. Uh, I can say nat at gmail.com, password. You can see we now get redirected to the, to the login page saying you are now registered, please log in. And then if we query our database now, You can see we get Natasha's added to our database with the hash password there. So that's great, that's all working. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is install two more packages. Um, they're gonna be it's gonna be passport. So if we do npm install passport and passport local, this is gonna be used to store our logged in users session details into a browser cookie so they can use our app as an authenticated user. Um, so once they're installed, we need to create a new file. We're going to call this passportconfig.js. The first thing we want to do in here is we're going to say const local capital L strategy equals require local passport local and then dot strategy. And underneath this, we're going to bring in our pool to query our database again. So const pool equals require uh, dot forward slash db config. And then we also want to bring in bcrypt as well, because we're going to want to compare our user's password to the hash password if they're stored in the database. So we'll say bcrypt. Like 
so. Okay, and then underneath here we're going to initialize a function. So say function initialize. This will initialize the local strategy. We're going to do now initialize. Let's spell it right. Do and this takes in um, passport passport variable, and here we're going to say passport dot use local um, new local strategy and this takes an object the email sorry username field and this is just going to be sent to email in this case as the user is going to log in with their email uh, you, you can also add password in as well password field and this will just be password we don't need to do this in our case because we already called our uh, field password field password in our EJS file um, and then this also takes in this use method also takes in a handler as well so we're just going to say authenticate user which is a function we're going to create now so we'll say up here uh, const authenticate user equals and this will take in an email password and also a done function, which we'll see what that does in a second. So in here, we're going to say, um, we're just gonna query our database to see if this email and password exists, uh, if this user exists in our database. So we're going to say pull.query, let's say select all from users, where email equals dollar one and that will be email with a function error results say console no if error throw error um, else um, we're going to say console log the results dot rows just for our reference and then we're going to say underneath that if results dot rows dot length is greater than zero so that means uh, it's found the user within our database we're going to say um, const user you know, set our user variable to the results dot rows dot zero so it will pass in the user object to this user from the database okay We're using this zero here because uh, the results dot rows returns a list we want the first element of that list okay so now we need to compare uh, the password that our users placed in the input form of the register login page to the one which we have held in the database and also to that we need bcrypt which has a compare function and that takes in the user's password and that compares it with the user up here dot password okay and then after that it'll either be an error or is match okay and this is match will compare the two passwords and this this will be rendered true if they do match or false if they don't match so we'll say um, again if error again that needs to be a function. We'll say if error throw error um, else if is match. We can say return done. And this done function takes in a few parameters arguments for say null, that means the first parameter is the error, so there's no errors. And as this is a match, we can return the user. Okay, so what this will do, this done function will store, will return the user and store it in the session cookie object for us to use in our app. Okay, um, else. Uh, we'll say if the password is incorrect, we'll say return done, and this time there'll be no error or no application error, 
but we can't return the user, so we'll say false as the passwords didn't match. And then we'll just pass in a message to say uh, password is not correct. Like so. Um, so that's it there. Or we can say now, nah. so if we come, if we do an else to this if statement up here, so else if there are no users, if we come down here, we'll say else. So if there are no users found in a database, we can just say return done. And there's going to be no application errors. We can't return a user because the user doesn't exist in the database. We'll just pass in a message to say uh, email is not registered. Okay, so that's it for our authenticate user uh, function. Next we need to do is just come underneath this passport.use here. We just need to do two more uh, functions. We'll say passport.serialize user. And that takes in um, the user object as well as the done function. And this will, uh, what do we want to do as well? This will be, here we can say done. It'll be null for error, and it'll be user. We want to store the user.id in the session. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. This passport takes the user and it stores the user ID in the session, and then we're going to do passport.deserialize user, and that takes in the user ID as well as done, and here. We're just going to do another pull.query and here we're going to select um, all from users where id equals uh, the dollar sign one again and here we want to pass in that id we passed in here and then error results again if error throw error <clears throat> else we want to return done and that will be null and we want to store the results.rows zero so the user object in the session okay so the password.serialize user stores the user ID in the session cookie, and then the uh, password.deserialize user uses that ID to, to obtain the user details from the database and store the full object into the session when we navigate our pages on our application. Okay, so now if we go back into our server, and on our server we just need to uh, set up our passport. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say uh, const passport equals require passport and then underneath here is we're going to bring in that function we just we just uh, created there with passport config so we'll say um, const initialize Passport equals require uh, the passport config file. So we'll be taking that function. I don't think I exported that at the bottom. No, I didn't. So at the bottom here, we just need to say module.exports equals initialize. Okay, so we're just basically exporting this function we've created here, this large function here. Back in our server, bringing that function in here with this line, and then we want to call that straight away initialize passport and we want to pass in the passport variable which we we brought in here this library up here okay and then if we come down to our middleware we're just gonna enable our app to use this so we're going to say app dot use we're going to say passport dot session And we're also going to say 
of this app.use passport.initialize. Okay. Um, so now if we come down here, so what initialize does it just sets up all of our passport to use within our app. Um, now what we want to do is if we come down underneath our register, so we're going to say app.post, say forward slash users forward slash login. So it's going to post our login. And here, what we want to do is we're going to say, um, instead of doing the usual request res, we're just going to say passport.authenticate. Okay. And this is going to, we're going to use the local strategy, which we defined in that passport config. And then this will take in an object after, it's so a second parameter. And we're going to say here, success redirect. And we're going to redirect to forward slash users, forward slash dashboard, if the login is successful. Okay, and then another one we want to do, we want to also say failure redirect. And that will redirect us to the login page again. So we'll say forward slash users forward slash login. And then also we want failure flash. This is just a failure flash message. We want to set that to true. So basically, if we can't authenticate, um, Express will render one of these failure messages we have stated here. Password's not correct or email's not registered. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to our login EJS file. And here I'm going to create another list. And I'm just going to say if messages dot error. And we'll do a list here. Just say another percent. We'll just say messages dot error. And we'll close that off down there as well with the EJS template symbols. Okay, so this messages, what happens here is passport will store any error messages in this messages object here. Um, in the session and then this error is what these uh, messages are here we restated in our um, in our config file these are stored as error messages by passport okay so that's how we're ret retrieving those from the login EJS file okay so this should be hopefully working now so let's give this a go let's see what's going on here okay that needs to be a capital U. Right. Okay, we're running now. So let's try again. Okay, so da da da. -da. Sorry guys, bear with me a second. I think that might be in my middle where uh, let's get that guy. Okay, got a few errors here, so let's try and get this sorted. Oh, I need to put, sorry, yeah, I've missed that out as well. Let's try that again. Yeah, just needed to uh, do that just to make sure they're initialized properly. Okay, so if we go, let's try this. 
Uh, okay. One more thing we need to do here is on our server, we just need to say, so if we go back to our dashboard, this needs to be uh, request.user.name and that will take the name from our database. So Passport will take this user and it will display the name from our database. Okay, so we can try that again. If we go back to our route, if we try logging in as Nat, Nat again, you can see we get the name Hello Natasha because it's taken from our database now, so that's working. So we're nearly there, guys. Um, I just want to make this a capital letter because it doesn't look very professional. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to our dashboard.ejs. Dashboard.ejs. And then in here, we'll just say a user. Dot, and then we're going to take the first um, letter of the string. So we'll say char at, and then we'll say zero for the first letter. And we'll put two upper uh, case and then we'll do a plus to do the rest of the sh the, the, um, the name and then we'll just say user dot slice from the fit from the first index of that string okay so now if we go back in there and refresh we should get yeah the capital n so that looks better Okay, so let's finish this off now. If we go back to our server uh, .js, and then I'm just going to add um, a logout route to this. So um, if we go underneath here, and uh, we'll go up to our get requests actually. Um, so under this get request here, we'll do app .get forward slash users forward slash logout and then should be a comma and then in here function and then here we're just going to say um, request.log logout this is a function we get with a uh, passport and then we're going to do a request dot flash just do another success message and this will be you have logged out like so and then also we just do a res dot redirect back to the login page now okay so we'll just do res dot redirect to forward slash users forward slash login quickly test that out if we go back to our app and we need to make this if we go back to our dashboard and you set to users.logout so let's just be logout okay let's start again so the server's been reset go back to our home log in Take that. Okay, and if we log out, you can see there we get the uh, the message that we have logged out. It takes us back to our login page. That's working. So next, we're going to add just two more pieces of middleware. Um, basically, just we're going to want to check if the user is authenticated. If they are logged in and authenticated, then if they visit the login page or register page, they'll be redirected to the dashboard. And there's also going to be, we're going to write a not authenticated piece of middleware. So if the user tries to visit the dashboard when not logged in, they'll be redirected to the login page. Okay, so we come back to our server.js. I'll write these two pieces of middleware functions down the bottom. We'll just say function. We first wanted to see if the user is authenticated. So we'll call this check authenticated. Spell it right. And this will take in the request, response, and next. Okay, and then this will be a function. So we're going to say here if the request dot is authenticated, as 
a function that comes with Passport. We're going to say um, return uh, res dot <coughs> redirect uh, forward slash users forward slash dashboard. Okay, so if the user is authenticated, they'll be redirected to the to the dashboard. Um, otherwise, we're just going to say next to move on to the next piece of middleware. Okay, and then we're going to come under this as well. We're going to do a function called check not authenticated. Again, request response next. And here we're going to say if um, request dot is authenticated again. That should be in parentheses. Um, we're going to say next because they are authenticated. And then so that should be return next. Um, otherwise, we're going to say um, res dot redirect. And here, if the user is not authenticated, we're going to want them to go to the login page. So we'll just say uh, forward slash users forward slash login. Okay, so now we're going to place these middleware in our routes up here. So basically, in our uh, if we want to in our register page, we want to see um, check authenticated. Place that in there. Um, we'll put that in for the login as well. So basically, when the user goes to these routes, it will first check if the user was authenticated first before moving on to uh, this response section here. Okay, and in the dashboard, we want to do the check not authenticated. So basically, if the user tries to access the dashboard, it will first go into this piece of middleware. It will look to see if the user is authenticated. If they are, they'll, they'll continue to the response. If not, the user will be directed to the login page again. Okay, let's try that. So now, if we try to go to our dashboard, we're not logged in at the moment. You see we get redirected to the login page. Um, and so if we log in now, um, and we try to go to the register page, And see we're just directed back to the dashboard that's the login and the same thing so that's working great so that's pretty much it guys let's just add another user so if we say i don't know donald trump um and then we'll say donald at gmail.com password password register so it's been registered. Just check our database. I'll log in again, sorry guys. Select all from users. And you can see we have our Donald Trump there, Donald at Gmail, and there's his hash password. So now if we try to log in, we'll say donald at gmail.com. You can see we get a hello Donald Trump there um, and we can log out and that's it. So that concludes the tutorial guys. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Um, obviously it's quite involved to get this uh, authentication uh, implemented into your app, but think it's worthwhile it's a good skill to know how to you know interact with databases store hash passwords and use your own local strategy for users to log in to your app but yeah i hope you enjoyed again and see you in the next video cheers